Greek comedy. Not a tra tragedian. Just give me a prompt. I first heard the phrase Turkish delight when my teacher read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe aloud to class. The C.S. Lewis book, the first in the Chronicles of Narnia, which now they've reissued them in chronological order as opposed to the canonical order. The first book was Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which establishes the world and the intersection and interaction and discontinuities of Narnia, the Kingdom of Narnia, and this world, the United Kingdom. Because really it's, just, it's about England and England's engagement with Turks and the Ottoman Empire and England's engagement with the subcontinental colonial holdings it had. But now everything's been republished. There's no need to do all the explaining that happens in Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe if it's whatever, the third or fourth book in the series as opposed to the first. So Turkish delight was this scary thing that an attractive, glamorous, compelling, mesmerizing witch in a sleigh used to entice young children to be part of her plot. I didn't grow up eating Turkish delight. When I first had Turkish delight, actual Turkish delight, it's delicious. And I learned on this big trip that I made, it was going to be my last big blowout, and it turned out to be the gateway drug to further travel. Gathered all of my frequent flyer miles from Delta and went with a friend to Athens, Greece, and we had ourselves booked out of Istanbul in a couple weeks. Trip of a lifetime, which it was, but it also set things off. And we did all the Greek portion, and then got to the Turkish portion, which was more beautiful and astonishing and hospitable and welcoming and such a fascinating culture. There will be signs at historic sites that say, you know, here are the following cultures that have archaeological remains. The Seljuk Empire, the Ottomans, the Persians, Alexander the Great, Roman, um, Hellenistic world, and so fascinated, also fascinated by the particularity of this country that speaks a language that doesn't have a relationship with many of its neighbors in terms of its linguistic origin. And I find it fascinating how many customs there are in the world in different cultures. One of the customs in Turkey is Turkish delight is different from region to region. At least it was a couple of decades ago. There were regional distinctions. And I was told, having run into a former New Yorker who had lived a block or a block and a half away from me, she said, here's what you do. Buy up Turkish Delight, buy up locum at these different rest areas, and then give them out as you go through the country. So buy some here and do that. And also stop and eat at these restaurants. Wait, no, trust me. Roadside restaurants are the best in Turkey. But aren't they? No, it's not the same as stopping somewhere on an American interstate. Okay, she was right. I've lived in cultures where you bring something to someone's house. I've lived in cultures where you bring an entire meal to someone's house, even though they're serving you a meal. But I had never been to a culture where you brought boxes of candy from this portion of the country to the next portion of the country and gave them to the person who had just sold you gas, which we did. And it was delightful. It's really delicious. If you get a chance to do it, don't do the rose flavor. It's a little over the top. Any of the other flavors, pistachio, hazelnut, delicious. Get real Turkish delight. If you don't like it, let me know. I'll rebate you. Just, you know, make a comment below. We'll address it appropriately.